Hey, welcome to this episode of the Ever Black Podcast. I'm not sure what day or year it is, but I sure as hell hope everyone is doing okay out there and you're looking out for yourselves and staying indoors and uh, finding creative way to pass the time until all this is over. Uh, shout out to all those essential workers that are pushing through and doing all the hard work to uh, keep us all safe or... Uh, especially uh, those working in hospitals. And thanks for everything you guys are doing. Uh, We appreciate it, and I hope you guys are staying safe as well. Total legends. On this episode, we talk to Pablo Divilla from Iris, a new badass band that you're all going to be hearing of everywhere very, very soon. And they've just dropped their killer debut album, Order of the Mind, through Nuclear Blast on March 27. And this thing is an absolute beast of a record. It's a very, very strong debut, and I, and I can't recommend it enough. Go right now, pause this, order it, stream it, and get it. And I guarantee you'll love it as much as I do. Kill a band that was signed by legendary Monty Connor, who has signed some of the biggest metal bands on the planet like Fear Factory, Sepultura, Death, Slipknot, Gojira, Obituary. The list is just insane and goes on and on. Go Google it and it'll knock you on your ass. You'll see who this dude has signed and uh, if it's good enough for him, it's uh, quality stuff. Go get it right now. All right, before we go into this episode, just need to give a shout out to our good friends at Blacklight Art and Design, who are our go to for all our screen printing needs. They do shirts, hats, patches, you name it. If you can wear it, they can print it. They've done all our shirts and hats for Ever Black Media, and they're awesome guys. www.blacklightad.com.au. Show is also brought to you by our good friends at RW Promotion, who are the best in the biz when it comes to stickers, flyers, banners, badges, and all other promo you need for your band or business. Go check them out at www.rwpromotion.com.au. Also want to give a shout out to our good friends of the occult clothing brand Electric Witch who have just launched their winter range and they've got the new Death Dealer hoodies available right now that are just flying out the door. Uh, Go get yours now. Don't delay or you'll miss out. These things are awesome and I've got to get my hands on one very, very soon. Electricwitch.com.au Go uh, give them a like on the socials as well, and uh, they're awesome. All right, don't forget to subscribe to the Ever Black Podcast through iTunes, Podcast, Spotify, Spreaker, YouTube, and Facebook, and check out all our reviews and articles at www.everblackmedia.com or like us on all the socials. All right, here is my chat with Pablo from Irist. Go get their debut album, Order of the Mind, right now out everywhere through nuclear blast horns high enjoy pablo uh thanks for joining us on the show man how's everything going over there in uh, your neck, neck of the woods uh it, i can't complain i can't complain you know we're stuck indoors and have been for a while now but uh i'm stuck in a good place i'm actually i've been staying in uh adam's basement uh for a couple of weeks now and this is where we have uh, his studio that he built, so we're at least able to stay productive and creative during these strange times. Have you been finding that throughout all this, it has been a good time to, to get creative? For me, it has, because I was already kind of working on some new stuff before, you know, all the shit went down, and, uh, you know, it, it just so happened that I was, I was already coming to to the studio just as this happened, so... You know, I'm just spending a lot more time on it now than I thought I, <laughs> I would. Uh, I would originally, but again, you know, I've got I've got my friends here. We've, we've got food. We um, we're doing what we love, so it's, we haven't haven't gotten too crazy yet. Beers though, have you got a fridge full of beers? The important stuff. We've uh, we've got the beers. Yeah, I've got to go on a beer run tonight, so you actually just reminded me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, of course, your band Iris have just released your debut album, Order of the Mind, and I really fucking love this record, dude. It's got a lot of depth and passion and, and thought behind it. It's it's just phenomenal, man. Like, for a debut, like, you guys have really kicked through that gate screening. It's amazing. Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. You know, we worked really hard on it. And we spent uh, a really long time putting it together and um, had some obstacles. You know, we had things fall through and... For a while, we were we were really in a limbo state because of a change of plans, or you know, because of one thing or the other. So we're just happy that that we finally reached the day where we could release it. And then, of course, you know, if we had planned to release it a little bit later, all this the corona, all this coronavirus shit would have gotten in the way, so it could have gotten postponed by who knows how long. Mm-hmm. So 
so yeah, I mean, we're just really happy we, we were able to to release it in one way or, or another. And you know, people are loving it as well, man. Like all the reviews, uh, feedback from people online that I'm seeing, it, it's everywhere, and people are really digging it, man. I mean, considering you know the circumstances and mm-hmm. what's going on, uh, that's that's a real positive thing. So I think, how, how are you guys feeling about that? Do you you know, is that helping you sort of get through the day? Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, I mean, for, uh, the way it kind of hits. It hits us initially is a little overwhelming because we haven't had much feedback of any kind for so long. You know, we've had these songs, we've just kind of been keeping them to ourselves for a couple of years, and very few people have really even heard them uh, in demo form. So just to have this huge wave of, of opinions and reviews and uh, stuff like that is uh, it's a shock initially, but fortunately, uh, the majority of it is positive, and that's, it's nice to hear, especially now that uh, we can't really go anywhere. So so if anything, it keeps us occupied. And like I said, it's nice to hear uh, that people are enjoying it and connecting with it because because up until now, it's really been our little baby, you know, something we've been keeping to ourselves. And, and we're, we're not really we were not really sure how anybody was going to receive it. Um, I, I kind of lost perspective after after working on it for so long. So, so it's good. You know, and even though it's you know your, your debut album through Nuclear Blast, you know, a lot of people see you you know as a new band, but they don't see all the blood, sweat and beers that go into the lead up of everything that makes an album, I guess. You know, what were the challenges mm-hmm. that you were facing leading up to uh, the release, obviously, with all what's going on aside? You know, there's there's always little little personal things or stuff that's going on in each of our, each of our own lives. So, you know, there was some life stuff that was happening, but I guess that's to be expected with anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as, uh, like, just the logistics of getting to the studio. Um, we, after we signed to Nuclear Blast, we were planning to go somewhere else and then kind of banked on that and all of our plans and our schedule was kind of uh, revolving around that and then it, it, it fell through. And so that kind of shifted, that forced us to shift gears and kind of restructure everything. And, you know, we were all, you know, working full time and, uh, so we had to make arrangements with our jobs and our living situations, and so for a little for a little while, uh, it, it got a little it got pretty stressful, and and we were also still writing during that time, so we were putting in all these hours and to continuing to kind of develop all the uh, all the demos. So that that was probably the most like that, that's the first thing that comes to mind because we we had to we had to adjust so drastically. Um, mm-hmm. But eventually it, it all ended up working out. You know we uh, we ended up working with Lewis Johns in the UK. And initially when we suggested it, we even I mean it even sounded like a long shot to us just you know because of the nature of having to plan to get, to travel so far to to record an album, especially that's you know it's, it's our first album so. It, it seemed even more far fetched, but uh, fortunately, everything kind of fell within the budget, and Lewis Johns had the time to do it, and everyone's schedule lined up, and um, so it all kind of worked out. You know, half this shit, I don't even know how it how, how it worked out because we were so kind of stuck in the in the writing process. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Some things kind of fell into place. You know, we were just we we're, were very stubborn too. So you know, we if, if we think something's like in the case of Lewis Johns, um, Adam, our other guitar player, had heard uh, Conjure's last album, Meyer, and um, we loved the drum sound on that album so much, and that, and we thought it would, it would suit our uh, sound so well for this album specifically that uh, we just kind of kept bugging the the guys at the label to look into it and uh, and uh, try to try to make it happen, you know. And, uh, like I said, fortunately, it did within the budget, so, you know, within everybody's schedule, and, and it all sort of worked out. Yeah, in, in regards to the album title, uh, Order of the Mind, and the artwork, how does that all tie in together? Um, well, the, the artwork, uh, Alex actually did the artwork. He's uh, this guy in uh, Philadelphia that we came across on social media. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly where. Adam is the one who, who came across him initially, but, yeah, he we, we rarely agree on many things you know as a band you know, we, <laughs> of course we love each other but everybody comes from very different backgrounds and um so that was one thing that we absolutely agreed on when he when he uh showed us some of our segments work everybody was 100 percent in and we contacted him and sent him the uh the album and he was into it he was into our vibe you know he, he sent us uh several options of artwork that he had and uh 
they were all amazing, but for most of us, the piece that we used for the album cover specifically, like just immediately like jumped out at us. And uh, the other thing was that like we we hadn't really we didn't start looking for an artist until the album was was done. And uh, at that point, it was much easier to kind of step back and catch a vibe, you know, with all the songs coming together as one. And it was just easier to to gauge what the what the aesthetics should do, you know, to complement all the mm. songs. And uh, anyways, so we that was an easy choice for us, and we went we went with him. And um, it just gets better for us; it gets better every time you look at it. You know, we're really happy that it was a quick decision, but we're really happy with how it came out. As far as how the lyrics tie in. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I can't give you a very good answer because Rodrigo is the one that writes all the lyrics for the band. I can tell you that the, like the over the overarching theme theme for the album was uh, overcoming, um, sort of just generally overcoming like the physical and uh, mental barriers. And uh, but yeah, you know, and a lot of this stuff is very abstract. You know, like we weren't like when we did choose the to work with Alex Ackerman, it's not like we're analyzing things, over analyzing things, or trying to. You know, it's it's more of a more impulsive, and you just kind of just kind of feel it out, you know. And, and that that kind of ties into our songwriting too. You know, there's there's very there's very pur- purposeful and specific things that we do uh, for a reason. But uh, a lot of the times, you know, when things come up, it's more I don't know I don't even know what to call it. Maybe just emotionally based, and mm. and then we sort of do the thinking afterwards, you know. But yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Actually, yeah, and and the title now sort of yeah. makes sense with everything you guys have been through and. To get to this point, it mm-hmm. sort of makes sense, mm-hmm. doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, the, the band name—it's not a question I usually ask. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the what's the name mean? What's what's Iris? Uh, Rodrigo uh, came up with it. It's, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. We thought that uh, it was again one of those things where it just seemed right. It seemed to fit the the vibe that we're going for. It wasn't mm. too flashy. It looked really cool on paper. Um, I think that initially the legal was looking at the word uh, Iris, and then for some reason they decided to put a T on it because it looked good and showed it to the rest of us, and then everybody was kind of seeing different words within that made-up word. And uh, I don't know, this looked kind of ancient and mysterious, but again, not too, you know, it's, it's, we thought about it later, and we were like, well, you know, you don't, you don't want a word that almost like, takes away from the music or automatically is going to put X, Y, or Z thing in your head, you know, it kind of, mm. it kind of just, you know, we, we, we wanted to color it in, you know, we, we want, we wanted to give it meaning over time. So that, that's kind of the, the thinking that went into it. You know, you signed to what, in my opinion, the best label on the planet, Nuclear Blast. Um, that was by the legendary yeah, awesome. Monty Connor. How, how'd that come about? How'd you get his attention? Oh man, it was it was really weird. You know, in 2000, I think it was 2017 that we released our EP. Um, we were we sent our we recorded everything here in Georgia, but then we sent it off for Matt Bayless to mix it. He's this guy in Seattle who mixed and recorded a bunch of bands that we love. I don't know, Russian Circles, uh, Ken Mode, Isis, Mastodon. So um, we sent it to Matt Bayless to mix. And right after he got done mixing, he asked if he could send it to a couple of guys or a couple of labels, I think it was. And of course, he said yes. You know, we were we were already touched. You know, that he would think so highly of the songs that he would even send them to anyone. So we said yes. And then I want to say a few days later, we had an email from from Monty. So you know, obviously we were shocked, and uh, we we so we started talking to him super early. You know, we we were going back and forth, and he was kind of. You know, feeling each other out and kind of like a courtship phase and uh, sending in more demos and more demos. And then uh, after uh, Rodrigo joined the band, we sent him three more demos with his vocals on it. And I think a couple of days later, he wrote back and said, you know, let's go ahead and make this thing happen. It sounds it sounds like it's supposed to. And, um, and then we just started planning all the logistics and how we would get to the studio we were gonna where we were going to record so um that's kind of why you know we i've had the question of how we kind of just appeared out of nowhere and i guess that's the answer it's you know the uh monty connor and nuclear blast kind of made us up so early on that um you know it was a time where we were ready to start playing shows you know we've done our ep we just wanted to play and but, uh, you know, if Monty kind of hits you up and says he's interested, then, you know, we imme- almost immediately just kind of went back <laughs> into writing mode and making the best demos that we could. And uh, just because, you know, 
I was definitely going to say no to that. You know, we grew up listening right. to every single band that he signed. I mean, it's just for, for me personally, and I know some of the other guys in the band feel this way, but it's almost like it feels almost like coming full circle. You know, I grew up listening to all the you know '90s Roadrunner bands, and those have absolutely influenced me and so many other people, whether they realize it or not. And then you know to have that same guy knock on your door one day and say that he's you know, to pay any amount of attention to you is already like, okay, I'm, I'm good. You know, I can die now. <laughs> it's true, man. He's, I mean, he's a legend. I mean, you would have probably picked his brains about all those days and signed those bands and stuff too. I'm, I'm guessing it would have been an interesting. Yeah, a little bit. Over yeah. A Unfortunately, we still, we, yeah, we, we still haven't gotten the chance to meet him in person. Um, oh, okay. But yeah. uh, we've spoken on the phone uh, several times over the past couple of years, but. Um, yeah, and now New York is basically closed, which is where he is. Um, so we're going to have to wait a little longer before we can actually go out for a, for a beer. And, you know, uh, of course, you, you were meant to be hitting the road and heading overseas. Is that right? You were meant to be going in soon? Um, right? I mentioned, that, yeah, well, I mean, after, that, that was after our EP. That was the plan, to get, to go ahead and to play some shows, you know, and to, to play as many shows as we could. But, but uh, yeah, what I was saying is that we, we weren't able to put maybe as much Mm. energy into that or planning any kind of regional tours because we uh, because our minds were were already you know thinking that okay we need we need to keep writing you know we need to make more demos for for monty to hear and to you know try to get signed by by this label this kind of appeared out of nowhere um but uh but yeah so far i mean the in the present we were uh yeah planning to play you know support the album go out and tour and Mm. play shows and everything but uh of course you know everything's on hold you know we're lucky in that we didn't have we didn't have anything booked uh anything uh we didn't have anything official uh booked too close to the release of the album so you know we we didn't uh we didn't have to go through anything like you know many other bands that have yeah had to fly back from europe or uh you know the shitty timing with a release that you know needs to have a tour happen immediately afterwards because they're an established band um, so, you know, in, in our case, it hasn't, I feel like it hasn't been, it could have been much worse. Um, and I'm just happy that the, the album release didn't get postponed so, because for me, it's more important that it just gets released, you know, even if it's during these coronavirus mm-hmm. times, um, then having to wait another, God knows how many months to release this thing after we've waited for, you know, nearly two years. So, I don't know, <laughs> so I'm just man, happy that with it my at this point. Oh, dude, oh, I'm glad it's out too. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I guess I, I've, I've, I, I've heard it earlier than release, obviously, because, you know, reviews and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it, man, I could imagine. It's such a great album. And I was like, hey, when this drops, people are going to love it. And um, I could imagine. Oh, you, waiting for Christmas, man. <laughs> so I know when you, you know, you yeah. wait for that thing <laughs> to drop and get everyone in. So it would have been, it just would have killed you. But I'm glad that it's out yeah. in the world, man, and um, you know other people are enjoying it as as much as I am, you know, which is which is cool. But we'd love to see you guys in Australia. What, what's have you got plans to do that one day once this all blows over? Discussing oh, we'd it. We'd love to, man. We'd love, I mean, that would that would be a dream. I think I think the legal has a cousin or some some family in Australia. But even aside from that, you know, that's that's a place we've all kind of always spoken about very fondly, and you know, I'm, oh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, we'd we'd love to, man. And uh, we'd love to say when. Yeah, you just got to be patient and wait this thing out and try to stay positive and not lose our minds. That's right. Well, uh, Pablo, thanks again for hanging on the show, man. And, you know, I really want to wish you and the the rest of the boys all the best for the the rest of the year. And uh, we'll have some cold ones ready for you when you uh, you do head. Right on, man. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, yeah. Really good talking to you, man. Thank you.